Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to welcome you all once again to MSB lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. Uh, in my last couple of lectures, I started discussion on 31 PNMR spectroscopy. So let me continue from where I had stopped and let us look into uh, molecules having more than one NMR active nuclei. For example, if you look into phosphorus compounds, we can have 19F, fluorine, we can have H and of course we can have 13 C. Let us try to look into more interesting molecules and try to interpret uh, the data obtained from different uh, uh, NMR nuclei. So one such example I am going to show you here. And look into this phosphorus compound here. Uh, we have on uh, phosphorus one fluorine is there and one H is there and one OH group is there. And also I have displayed uh, one H NMR spectrum 19F NMR spectrum and also 31P NMR spectrum. So let us see how one can split the lines to see the multiplets are okay or not. For example, if you just look into 1H NMR, there are two types of uh, hydrogen atoms are there. One is OH and other one is directly attached to phosphorus H. And we know that uh, phosphorus to fluorine and phosphorus to hydrogen uh, with one bond separation show huge or large amount of coupling constant and they come in the order of 800 to 900 and sometime at up to 1200 hertz. And in this example, if you just look into the OH signal, it's, it comes around 14, it is pretty D shielded. And then when you look into hydrogen, now hydrogen can split by two ways. One is with one bond uh, separated phosphorus it, that splits into a doublet and then each line in the doublet will be further split into doublets because of two bond coupling with fluorine. So let us ignore this one time being, let us focus our attention on signal of this directly bound phosphorus bound hydrogen. First it shows a doublet and this we call it as 1J PH and of course magnitude is also given here. It is 7, 80 hertz. Then it will be coupled with fluorine. So this will be a doublet and this is uh, 115 hertz. This is 115 hertz, I think, yeah, 115 hertz. So this is again 115 hertz. This is 2J FH coupling. So now the spectrum should look like. So you can see here this is the spectrum. So this is how you can interpret the splitting. And now let us look into 19F here. 19F when we consider again this is first coupled to phosphorus and then it will be coupled to hydrogen and it is very similar to what we saw in case of 1H NMR signal for this one. This distance is called 1JPF, 1JPF is 1030 hertz here and then each line is further split because of 2J a coupling here, this is 115 hertz. So this is also a doublet of doublet. So phosphorus NMR, we can focus our attention now. Again, first it will be coupled to PF because here PF coupling is much larger. So it first splits into doublet and here uh, this is the coupling, this is uh, 1030 hertz and then each line in the similar fashion it will be split by hydrogen and this is 1J pH coupling, this is 780 hertz. So all of them look identical except if you omit this portion all of them look identical doublet of doublets because they are all have uh, two couplings with one bond and two bond coupling. So this is how you can interpret uh, data very easily and I, you must have understood now how it is easy to interpret data obtained from multinuclear NMR spectra. Let us look into more such examples here. Uh, of course, here I have shown you. So it is uh, doublet of doublet here. First it splits by fluorine, 1JPF and then each line will be split into further 
two lines because of pH coupling. pH coupling. This is 1030 and then this is 780 hertz. So, it appears like so like this. Now, I have displayed all of them. You can clearly see here. Now, let us move on to another example where instead of uh, one f, we have two f's are here and then instead of OH, we have a h here. And again, we can interpret data in a similar fashion. First, let us take up 1H NMR. 1H NMR, if you take, uh, first it will be split into a doublet. This is 1J pH, pH and 1J pH is about uh, 80, 80 hertz here given. So, now each uh, line will be split into uh, triplet because we have two equivalent chemical and magnetically equivalent uh, fluorine atoms are there. They are uh, two bond apart from hydrogen. So, they split this one into triplet that means basically it happens something like this. And this spacing what is 2J FH coupling and this is in the order of 115 hertz and the spectrum should look like. So, this is 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio you should remember from Pascal or if you have forgotten I can simply show you. So, we have two of them are there one is like this one will be like this and so, this ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, what you get is so, this is what I have shown here. So, it is very easy to interpret. This is about 1 H NMR spectrum. Now, let us look into 19 F NMR spectrum here. 19 F, if you see these two fluorines are equivalent. So, they will show one uh, chemical shift. First, they will be coupled with phosphorus to show a doublet and each line in the doublet will be further split into a doublet because of 2 J pH coupling and as a result what we get is a doublet of doublet and this 1 J pF value is given, 1 j p f is 1110 hertz and then here this is f h coupling this is about 115 hertz. So, this is a, again a doublet of doublet. So, what is left is now 31 p nmr. So, 31 p nmr if you see here we saw from the previous 19 f nmr that p f coupling is larger compared to p h coupling as a result first p signal is split into triplet and then each line will be split by same 1 j pH coupling the magnitude of that one is little less. So, it comes second first we will take uh, something like this. So, this spacing is same as this spacing this is our 1 j pF and this is 1110 hertz and now each line will be split into a doublet here. So, now all are identical, these spacings are identical. This is 1 j pH, this is 80 80 hertz, but the spectrum should have looked like something like this, something like this, but if you just see there is little bit of overlapping it appears for this one and these two are one and for this one little bit overlapping is there because what happens if you see the difference is much less here as a result what happens it little bit it comes here and it comes here little bit and same thing it comes little bit here and it little bit here as a result what happens the spacing does not look like uniform. So, now it appears like this. So, but still we should be able to interpret the data to understand the splitting pattern. So, you can see that one that is pH coupling. So, now let us look into 2 examples given here, 2 isomers of a square planar complex is shown here. We have on platinum 2 PME3 groups are there and 1 bromine and 1 chlorine is there and you know that square planar complexes of the type M A 2 B 2 or M A 2 B C. So, they can show isomerization 
And when you look into isomerization, two type of isomers are possible. One is cis, one is trans here. And then how to distinguish them? For example, I have made these compounds in a particular reaction. In that one, I do not know which isomer I got or I must have got both the isomers. Then how to interpret data? Just if you just look into this uh, trans compound here, trans compound you can do C2 axis rotation. As a result, what happens? These two are identical, indistinguishable. Whereas here, you cannot do that one. So if you do the C2 axis rotation, Br goes here and Cl goes here. So it does not have C2 axis of rotation and either in this direction or in this direction. So here, two phosphorus are chemically equivalent, but they are not magnetically equivalent. As a result, and of course, even chemically they are not equivalent because one is cis to chlorine, one is trans to bromine. Otherwise, this one is cis to bromine and trans to chlorine. As a result, both are different. So both of them show separate signals. Uh, and then we know that platinum, 195 platinum, we have two isotopes, 196 platinum, and this is roughly 34 percent NMR active, and I with I equals half, and then this is 66 percent is NMR inactive with I equals 0. So that means basically if I take any of these isomers, 100 molecules, if I take out of 100 molecules, 66 molecules do not show any interaction with platinum because of 196, which is having I equals 0. And then if you consider the other 34 percent, so they will be interacting with 195 platinum with I equals half that can split the phosphorus signal. So first let us consider this one. We get a singlet like this for 66 percent of that one, no coupling with platinum, whereas this one will split into a doublet here. When it is splitting into doublet, something like this, they will be coming and if this is 66 percent, this will be 17 percent intensity, this will be 17 percent, so something like this. And then this separation, we call it as 1J PTP. So this is how uh, a trans compound would look like. But on the other hand, when we look into cis one, we will get two signals here, two signals and also because of uh, difference in their chemical and magnetic behavior, they split each one into a doublet. So that means basically you get a doublet here and you get a doublet here. One is for this one, one is for this one. This platinum also splits each into uh, further a doublet here, something like this. And this one might come here and something like this will be there, very similar to here. And this spacing is same as this spacing. And then here this spacing is same as this spacing. So here you can, if you assign A and B, this is delta PA and this is delta PB. And then if you take here, this is 1J PT PA. And then if, if I take this one is here, if it has come, so for example, the center of the middle line, if I take this is 1J PT. PB. So it is basically having two sets of this, that is it, because they have again coupling between them. So each line will be split into doublet. So this is how we can interpret. And the moment we look into spectrum, we should be able to tell whether we have obtained uh, cis isomer or trans isomer, or both of them are present in certain stoichiometric ratio. By looking into the intensity, we should be able to tell whether the cis is 75 percent, trans is 25 percent, or vice versa. So this gives some idea about the type of isomers we have obtained and also how the spectrum looked like. So it is very easy to distinguish. On the other hand, we carry out this reaction. We do not know whether we got cis isomer or trans isomer. Then if the spectra is provided, then we should be able to tell uh, which isomer is present or there is a possibility of the presence of both isomers in different stoichiometric ratio. I have another interesting molecule here, 31 p NMR spectrum of tetrakis trimethyl phosphine methyl rhodium compound shows some sort of flexionality. At room temperature, it shows a doublet. At minus 80 degree centigrade, it shows two signals. One is doublet of doublets and another one is quartet of doublets. So how that happens? First, we should look into the molecule and how many ligands are there. And of course, by looking into the molecule, we should be able to tell that it is rhodium 1. Let me write the possible structures. So 
first let me write uh, square pyramidal geometries all possible. So, this is one possibility where all uh, phosphines are in the plane and methyl in the axial position. So, this is another possibility. I do not think I should be able to write uh, any more uh, isomers for square pyramidal geometry here, only two are possible. Now, another possibility is trigonal bipyramidal. So, here let me put two phosphines the axial position and two in the equatorial plane. and then one methyl group here or other possibilities one methyl group is here, one PPH 3 is here. these. So, now these are the possibilities. I do not think any other isomeric forms are possible for this one. So, now let us look into room temperature spectrum. In the at room temperature what we are getting is a simple doublet. Why we are getting a simple doublet? Here we should remember 103 rhodium is NMR active, it is 100 percent abundant and I equals half and then phosphorus to rhodium coupling constant would be anywhere between 160 to 300 hertz. As a result, in this case if I write it couples, so all these phosphorus atoms are equivalent and they couple with rhodium to give a doublet here. So, that means the correct structure is for this one, this is the doublet. So, at room temperature it shows a doublet means the structure is something like this. where four trimethyl phosphine groups are in the plane and one methyl group in the axial position. So, now let us look into doublet of doublets and quartet of doublets here. If you just look into this structure here, in this structure one is axial and this is you know making cis relationship with remaining three. So, first let us say this will couple with this one to give a doublet this one will uh, couple with this one to doublet and each line will be a quadrate. Same thing is true in case of this also. If you see here, so this is coupled with rhodium to give a doublet and each line in the doublet will be split into 1, 2, 3, so quadrate here. So, that means two possibilities are there, whether it has this structure or whether it has this structure that we have to analyze now. First, let us look into these three in the plane. When you look into these three in the plane, what actually happens is, so, this one is trans to this one and these two are trans to each other. As a result what happens? This may not be a right structure for interpretation of this data provided here, quartet of doublets and probably here these three are identical. So, these three would couple equally to rhodium and then, then they couple with this one to show a doublet. So, the doublet is here, these three in the equatorial plane would couple with rhodium to give a doublet and then this will be split again into doublet here. So, this is 1 j rhodium phosphorus coupling and then this is P p coupling 2 j P p coupling P p coupling. So, yes this is a doublet of doublet is there, this is fine, these are taken care now and now this will be split into this doublet first and then it will first this is split by rhodium to give a doublet and each line in the doublet will be a quadrate here. And then this is 2 j p p and then this is 1 j rhodium phosphorus. So, that means the axial one this is for axial one and then this is for 
equatorial ones, P e. Now we can say at room temperature, this molecule exists in square pyramidal geometry, but at minus 80 degrees centigrade, this turns into trigonal bipyramidal geometry having three phosphines in the equatorial plane and one being axial. So, this explains that way we can also understand the fractionality and uh, the type of uh, geometrical changes that happens with the temperature. So, here 31 PNMR comes very handy in understanding the both the geometry and also the position of ligands in the coordination sphere. With this let me stop here. Let me continue with more interesting examples in my next lecture. Thank you.